Hello future engineers, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're still new to my channel and you like what I'm doing, please don't forget to share my videos to your friends and to your friends' friends. That's one way you can keep me going, inspired and refreshed. Now, if you find my videos interesting and important to your studies, also please don't forget to subscribe. Okay, let's have example or problem 7. For the 20 kN force shown below, resolve it into X and Y components, U and V components. So this time, U and V are not perpendicular to each other. So first, for the 20 kN force, it is directed up to the left. So we expect that the X component is negative and the Y component is positive. So again, we draw horizontal and vertical lines from the tip of the 20 kN load. So the parallelogram reduces to a rectangle. So this is Fx, which is expected negative. Or you may put here negative Fx, which is 20 cosine of 30 equals negative Fx. Or you may directly solve it as negative 20 cosine of 30 because it is directed to the left. So Fx is negative 20 cosine of 30 degrees. So Fx is negative 17.32 kilonewtons. Fy is directed upwards, so it is positive. Or Fx is 17.32 kilonewtons left Fy. Fy is 20 sine of 30. So Fy is 10 kilonewtons upward. Or Fy is 10 kilonewtons upward. Then for, with respect to the U and V axis, so this is the 20 kN load. We draw lines parallel to the U and the V axis to form a parallelogram. The measure of this angle is 20 degrees. That's 90 minus 70 degrees, so 20 degrees. So the angle formed between the U and V axis is 20 plus 45 is 65 degrees. So the 65 degrees is here. Here. So the obtuse angle, therefore, is 180 minus 65 is 115 degrees. This is 115 degrees. So this is also 65, and this obtuse angle between the U and V components would be 115 degrees, or 18, 180 minus 65 degrees. So this angle here is 15 degrees because... Uh, it is 90 minus 45 minus 30. So the angle between the V and the 20 kilonewton force is 15 degrees. Again, 15 degrees is 90 minus 45 minus 30. So that's 15 degrees so that we can compute this angle. It is 100 degrees because it is 180 minus 65 minus 15. So that measure of angle is 100 degrees. So first, let's solve for the the FU component, which is expected negative because it is in the opposite direction of the positive U direction. So this is negative of FU. And we can compute this by, because this is also negative of FU, and that is 20 by sine law. So by sine law, negative FU as to sine 15 equals 20 as to sine of 65. So negative FU as to sine 15 equals 20 kN as to sine of 65. So using your calculator, FU is negative 20 sine 15 over sine 65. So FU is negative 5.712 kN. Then FV is this component here. So it is positive in the direction of, of the V axis. Or you may say FU is 5.712 kN and it is directed uh, in the opposite direction of you which makes an angle of uh, from the horizontal it is 70 degrees from the horizontal because if you extend this U here negatively the measure of the angle that FU, F negative, negative FU makes with the x-axis is also 70 degrees. So that's 70 degrees. 
Then FV as to sine 100 is equal to 20 as to sine 65. FV is positive. So using your calculator, FV is 20 sine 100 over sine 65, 21.73 kilonewtons at an angle of 90 plus, 90 plus 45 is 135 at theta equals 135. Or the other way, it makes an angle of 45 degrees with a negative x-axis. So you may also answer that way. You, the answer is also 21.73 kilonewtons at theta equals 135 degrees. So for this case, let's just leave the answer that way. Problem 8 for the 20 kilonewton force shown below. Resolve it into X and Y components, B, U, and Y components, C, X, and V components, then letter D, U, and V components. So U and V, again, are perpendicular to each other. And we can compute the angle, the measure of the angle here and this angle here. U is making an angle of arctan of 5 over 12 with a positive x-axis, but it is clockwise direction. So first, with respect to the x and y axis, so from the tip of the 400 Newton force, draw horizontal and vertical lines. So this is fx, which is negative, infinity, directed to the left, and fy is positive because it is upward. So fx is negative 400 cosine 55. So fx is, so by the way, that's 125 degrees. So fx is negative, or fx is 400 cosine 125. That's the other solution. So the angle is the angle that the force makes with the positive x-axis. And remember the sign convention, positive counterclockwise. So that is positive 125. So the answer is the same, negative 229.4 kilonewtons. Ah, uh, sorry, newtons. Fy, on the other hand, is positive 400 sine of 55, because that's 55, or 400 sine of 125. That's the same. Remember, sine of data and sine of its supplement are equal. So 400 sine 55 is also 400 sine 125, where 125 is 180 minus 55. So Fy is 327.7 newtons. Then for, with respect to the U and Y axis, this is the U, and that's the Y axis. So from the tip, we draw line parallel to the U axis, and we draw line parallel to the Y axis, which is vertical. So this is the, the extension of the U axis. So from the tip, parallel to U, from the tip, parallel to the Y. So this is the parallelogram. Then we compute this angle here as arctan of 12, 5 over 12. So that's FU, which is negative again because it is opposing the positive U direction. So this is 22.62 degrees. 22.62 is arctan of 5 over 12. So use your calculator there. So this angle is also 22.62. So the angle between the 400 Newton force and the negative of FU is 55 minus 22.62. So that's 32.38 degrees. Again, 32.38 is 55 minus 22. This angle here is 22.62. So 32.68. Uh, 32.38. So that we can now compute F U by sine law. Sorry, F Y by sine law. But uh, this angle here is equal to 90 minus 55 because this is vertical, that's horizontal. So this is vertical, that's horizontal. So the measure of this angle is 90 minus 55 is 35 degrees. So because this is 35, 90 minus 55, that's also 35 degrees. Remember the property of a parallelogram. So this obtuse angle here is 180 minus 35 minus 32.38. So that's negative FU, that's FY, and this is the 400 Newton force. 
this angle is 32.38 that is 35 degrees so therefore this is 180 minus 35 minus 32.38 so that's 112.62 so to solve for f u negative f u sine as to sine 35 equals 400 as to sine 112.62 and it is also equal to Fy as to sine 32.38. So Fu is negative 400 sine 35 over sine 112.62. So Fu is negative 248.6 newtons. Fy is positive 400 sine 32.38 as divided by sine of 112.62. So using your calculator, Fy is 232.1 newtons. So those are the answers. There's no need to indicate the direction because it is it is already in the figure, in the given figure. C, X, and V components. So again, we draw the force and we have the X and the V axis. So from the tip, we draw lines parallel to the V and the X axis so that we can uh, determine the sign of the components. So this is again, uh, this is arctan of 12 over 5 because the slope of the axis is given. So that's the measure of this angle here is also the angle of this right triangle here. Here, arctan of 12 over 5, 67.38 degrees. So therefore, this angle here. Or this angle here is also 67.38, remember, uh, parallel to V, and this is the x-axis. So that's 67.38. So this remaining angle is 180 minus 67.38 minus 55. So that's 57.62 degrees. So by sine law, uh, Fx is negative in this case. So this is negative of Fx, and this is Fv, which is positive. So by sine law, negative fx as to sine 57.62 equals fv as to sine 55 equals 400 as to sine 67.38. So again, negative fx as to sine 57.62 equals fv as to sine 55 equals 400 as to sine 67.38. So fx is, because this is negative, negative 400 sine 57.62 divided by sine 67.38 so Fx is negative 366.0 newtons. Fv is 400 sine 55 over sine 67.38. So it is 355 newtons. And lastly, part D with respect to the U and V axis. So parallel to U and V from the tip of the 400 newton force. So this is parallel to U and parallel to V because U and V axis are perpendicular to each other, this parallelogram reduces to a uh, rectangle. And since we, we since this angle measure of this angle is 55 degrees minus 22.62 degrees, remember? Because this is 22.62 equal to this, so that's 32.38. So F U is again negative, it is directed towards the opposite u direction and fv which is this is same direction as the v axis so it is positive so from the figure negative fu is 400 cosine 32.38 from this right triangle so hypotenuse cosine of 32.38 is negative fu so fu is negative 337.8 newtons then fv is opposite to 32.38 so hypotenuse 400 sine of 32.38 is equal to uh, 214.2 newtons then let's have a new topic resultant of two or more concurrent coplanar forces by the force polygon method and component method so let's uh, express each force into x and y components so that we can simply add them. So in general, let's have this concurrent, three concurrent forces. It may be more than this or it may, also, it may have only two forces. 
Then let's arrange this into tip to tail method. Remember that the arrangement or the order of the arrangement of these forces into tip to tail is irrelevant. You can start from any of the force. So to illustrate, let's have F1 first, F2, then F3. Then we also have F2, F3, then F1. And let us see if the terminal point is the same. So F1, then connect F2. That's F2. Then F3. So that's F3. Therefore, the resultant is the vector from the tail of the first force to the tip of the last force. So that's the resultant. Let's check if we have the same resultant if we start with F2. So this is F2. Then connect F3. So that's F3. Then F1 last. So we see that regardless of the ordering of the arrangement of the forces into tip to tail manner, the, re the resultant is the same. So we can now remove these forces because we have verified that the order does not matter. So if we resolve F1 into components, then its X component is negative because it's to the left and Fy is positive. Then we now remove F1 because F1 is represented by these components here. F2 is, we have F2y, then F2x, both positive. Then we remove F2. Then for F3, we have F, F3y and F3x, both positive also, remove F3. So we notice that the horizontal projection of R is denoted by Rx, and the vertical component is Ry. So we notice that Rx is the net value when negative F1x, F2x, and F3x are added. And Ry is simply F1y plus F2y plus F3y. Well, that's the height. So therefore, Rx is simply negative F1x plus F2x plus F3x or simply summation of forces along x. And the angle that R makes with the positive x-axis is denoted by theta. So that theta is R tan of Ry over Rx if, it, if the resultant lies in the first quadrant. And we will learn later how to express theta if the resultant lies in the second, third, and fourth quadrant, respectively. So Rx is negative F1x plus F2x plus F3x, or Rx is simply summation of forces along x. Ry, on the other hand, is F1y plus F2y plus F3y, or Ry is summation of forces along y, so that the magnitude of the resultant is square root of Rx square plus Ry square, and theta or tangent of theta is Ry over Rx, therefore theta is R tan of Ry over Rx. This is the formula if R lies in the in the first quadrant. So we must generalize the value of theta, which is counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, and it is R tan of absolute value of Ry over Rx if it lies in the first quadrant, or simply R tan of Ry over Rx if it lies in the first quadrant. It is R tan of or theta is equal to 180 degrees minus R tan of absolute value of Ry over Rx if it lies, if the resultant lies in the second quadrant. So this angle, if this is the resultant, then Rx is negative, Ry is positive. So therefore, theta from the positive x-axis is 180 degrees minus the R tangent of this angle. And to make this positive, it should be R tan of Ry over Rx because Rx is negative. So therefore, theta is 180 degrees minus R tan of absolute value of Ry over Rx in quadrant number 2. Third is, if it lies in the third quadrant, then theta is 180 degrees plus R tan of absolute value of Ry over Rx. Take note that in the third quadrant, both Ry and Rx are negative. And finally, if the resultant R lies in the fourth quadrant, 
And this is the angle, r tan of r absolute value of ry over rx. This would be the angle from the x-axis. So therefore, theta is 360 degrees minus r tan of absolute value of ry over rx. So I hope that you get the point or idea how to express the direction of r if it lies in any quadrant. So you just make ry over rx uh, uh, absolute value and remember that that angle r tan of absolute value of ry over rx is the acute angle between the x-axis, positive or negative x-axis, and the resultant r. Again, r tan of absolute value of ry over rx is the acute angle between the x-axis, positive x-axis or negative x-axis, and the resultant. Then, since theta is reckoned from the positive x-axis, then I hope that you can analyze that this will be the angle theta. So let's now have examples applying the just the recent topic which is about component method. So find the resultant of the two forces shown below. So let's have to express each force into their components, x and y components. So for the first force, so this is 360, then these are the components that we form a parallelogram, which is a rectangle here. So F1x is 360 cosine of, of 40, positive. F1y is 360 sine of 40. So 360 cosine of 40 degrees is equal to 275.8. F1y is 360 times sine. This one is F1y sine of 40. So, F1y is 231.4 newtons. Then, for the second force, uh, take note that the hypotenuse, given the slope, so this is 13 by Pythagora theorem, square root of 5 square plus 12 square plus 13 square. Remember the common proportions of the sides of a right triangle 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, and 25. Remember the ratios. So, F1, F2x is negative because it is directed to the left. F2y is positive because it is directed upward. So, F, negative F2x is 280 times cosine of this angle, which is 5 over 13, because this is supposed to be 13. So, or by similar triangles, Negative F2x as to 5 equals 280 as to 13. So F2x is 280 times cosine of theta times 5 over 13, which is the same result. So magnitude of the force, x component of distance, which is
then let's have problem 11 uh, find the resultant of the system of concurrent coplanar forces shown solved in four ways so first way is by parallelogram law second way by uh, component method then third way by tabulation fourth way by let's introduce another technique we just find the angle of each force with the positive x-axis then the x component is in general magnitude of force cosine of the angle that the force makes with the positive x-axis sum of forces then the y component ry is sum of force sine of the angle that each force makes with the positive uh, x-axis so let's have the parallelogram law first so we combined 60 and 84 first then for the second part 52 and 57 newton so the angle 40 degrees because this is 30 degrees therefore 84 newtons makes an angle with the positive x-axis clockwise of 60 degrees so this is 100 degrees 60 plus 40 therefore the measure of the other interior angle of this parallelogram is 80 degrees 180 minus 100 so that's the resultant so that's 80 degrees which is equal also to this then by cosine law r1 square equals 60 square plus 84 square minus 2 times 60 84 cosine of 80 degrees so because this is 84 so r sub 1 is equal to 94.37 newtons then for the direction we need to solve for this entire angle here so i'll call this alpha alpha 1 let's call this alpha 1 which is equal to the measure of this angle here also alpha 1 so sine law 60 as to sine alpha 1 equals 94.37 as to sine of 80 so alpha 1 is six quantity arc sine of quantity 60 sine 80 over 94.37 so alpha 1 is 38.77 degrees therefore r1 makes an angle with the positive x-axis it is below so it is 60 minus alpha 1 so let's call that theta 1 with the x-axis positive x-axis 60 minus 38.77 degrees so theta 1 is 21.22 degrees next for 52 and 57 newtons we can compute the angle that its force makes with the negative x-axis the first one is arctan of 12 over 5 which is 67.38 so that's 67.38 that's arctan of 12 over 5 this angle that the 57 newton force makes with the negative x-axis this angle is arctan of 24 over 7 and that's 73.74 degrees so the sum of this angle is 67.38 plus 73.74 let's form a parallelogram then the angle here is 180 minus this obtuse angle here which is 67.38 degrees plus 73.74 degrees and this is the resultant 2 r2 so that's beta 2 and this is also beta 2 so beta 2 is 180 minus 67.38 degrees minus 73.74 degrees so beta sub 2 is 38.88 degrees then by cosine law we can also r2 the magnitude it is r2 square equals 52 square plus 57 square minus 2 times 52 times 57 cosine of beta 2 which is 38.88 degrees so the magnitude of r sub 2 is 36.58 degrees so next let's compute the angle the measure of the angle between 52 and uh, the r2 so this i enlarge to clearly compute the angle between 52 newton force and r sub 2 this is r sub 2 and this let's call that alpha 2 so by sine law 57 as to sine alpha 2 equals 36.58 as to sine 38.88 degrees 
So, alpha 2 is arc sine of quantity 57 sine of 38.88 divided by 36.58. So, alpha 2 is 77.98 degrees. So, the angle that R2 makes with the negative x-axis, so we draw horizontal line. So, this is 94.37 and that's 21.23 degrees. So, I draw horizontal line here. Then, this angle is theta 2 from the negative x-axis, uh, this very small angle there. And it is equal to alpha 2 minus this angle here, which is 67.38. So theta 2 is 77.98 minus 67.38. So theta 2 is 10.60 degrees, the angle that R2 makes with the negative x-axis. So that, that angle, very small angle there, is 10.6 degrees. Then we form another parallelogram. And the measure of the angle between R1 and R2 is 180 minus 10.6 minus 21.23. That's the resultant. It lies in the fourth quadrant. So let's call that angle between R1 and R2 as beta. Beta is 180 degrees minus 10.6 minus 21.23. And let's also call this angle as alpha. So beta is 180 minus 10.6 minus 21.23 degrees. So beta is 148.17 degrees. Then having known that alpha is 180 because alpha and beta are adjacent in a parallelogram. So alpha is 180 minus 147.17 degrees. 148.17 degrees. So alpha is 31.83 degrees. Then by by cosine law in this right uh, right portion of the triangle right part of this parallelogram so this is r square equals 94.37 square plus 36.58 square minus 2 times 94.37 36.58 cosine of alpha which is 31.83 so r is equal to 66.30 newtons and the direction, so we need to solve this angle, very small angle here, call that P by sine law, uh, 36.58 as to sine of P equals R, 66.13 as to sine of alpha, which is 31.83. So P is arc sine of quantity 36.58 sine 31.83 divided by 66.13 degrees. So P is equal to 16.96 degrees then having known p the angle that the resultant makes with the positive x-axis because this is clockwise that's negative so counterclockwise so it is 360 minus p minus 21.23 360 degrees minus 21.23 minus p which is 16.96 degrees so theta is 321.8 degrees so therefore, we express our answer as six, R is 66.13 newtons at theta equals 321.8 degrees. So that's it for this first method. So as I said, another method is to compute the angle that each force makes with the positive x-axis. And remember, the sign convention is positive counterclockwise. Then the x component of each force is simply force times cosine of the angle that the force makes with the positive x-axis. So I think this is also easy as long as you know the angle that each force makes with the positive x-axis. So for force 1, the angle is already 40 degrees counterclockwise. So for 60 Newton force, it is already theta 1 is already 40 degrees. For the 52 Newton force, it is, remember this angle here is 67.38 arctan of joule over 5. Therefore, theta 2 is 180 minus 67.38. So, theta 2 is 180 minus 67.38. So, theta 2 is 112.62 degrees. For 57 Newton force, the angle it makes with the positive x-axis is 180 plus this angle, which is arctan of 24 over 7, 73.74. So 180 plus 73.74 is 
180 plus 73.74, 253.74 degrees. Then for for the 84 Newton force, you may call the angle theta 4 as negative 60 because it is clockwise. Or if we base it on the counterclockwise direction, the standard uh, measurement of angle, then it is 270 degrees plus 30 is 300 degrees. So for 84 Newton force, theta 4 is 300 degrees or negative 60 degrees. It's up to you if you want. So therefore, Rx is force cosine of the angle that the force makes with the x positive x-axis. So it is 60 cosine of 40 plus 52 cosine of 112.62 degrees plus 57 cosine of 253.74 degrees plus 84 cosine of 300 degrees or 84 cosine of negative 60 degrees. That's the same. So using your calculator, adding them, Rx is 52 newtons. Then Ry is 60, summation forces Y, 60 sine 40 plus 52 sine 112.62 plus 57 sine of 253.74 degrees plus 84 sine of 300 degrees. So, using your calculator, adding these values, Ry is equal to negative 40.9 newtons. So, the magnitude, the square root of 52 square plus 40.9 square. So, the magnitude of the resultant is 66.60 newtons. So, there's a very small difference of 0 0.03 as compared to our first solution. But this is more accurate than the first because the first was solved by uh, parallelogram law. And we combine the resultant of the two forces. So that's why this is more accurate. Then for the angle, because Rx is 52, Ry is negative. So it is in the fourth quadrant. So the angle theta is 360 degrees minus R tan of absolute value of 40.9 over 52. You can remember. So, theta is 321.8 degrees. So, it's the same theta as the first solution. Then, solution number 3 by component method. So, Rx is 60 cosine of 40 degrees. Then, 52 is negative. Fif negative 52 cosine of 67.38. Remember, this is 67.38 or 50, negative 52 times cosine of this angle is 5 over 13 because this is 13, 5, 12, 13. Then negative 57 times 7 over, this is 25. The hypotenuse is 25, 7, 24, 25. Or the other way is negative 57 cosine of 73.74 degrees. The other way here, it is negative 52 cosine of 67.38. That's the same. Then 84 sine, because this is 30 degrees, positive. So 84 sine, this is opposite to 30. That's This is the x component. So 80 plus 84 sine of 30. So Rx is 52.00 newtons, the same as this. Ry is 60 sine of 40. Then plus... 52 times 12 over 13, or 52 sine of 67.38, that's the other way. 57 is going down, the y component is going down, so minus 57 times 7, oh, uh, sorry, 57 times 24 over 25, or negative 57 sine of 73.74, that's the other way. Then 84 is going down, so this is the vertical component, so minus... 84 cosine of 30. So Ry is equal to negative 40.9 also. So therefore, the answers will be the same because Rx and Ry are equal to this. So I will not solve it again in this manner. Solution number 4 by tabulation method. So we have force, x component, y component for the 60 newton force. The x component is 60 cosine of 40, and that is 45.96. The y component is 60 sine 40, that's 38.57 newtons. 
For the 52 newton force, the x component is negative 52 times 5 over 13, and that's negative 20. And the y component is positive 52 times 12 over 13, that's 48 newtons. For the 57 newton force, the x component is negative 57 times 7 over 25, that's negative 15.96. The y component is negative also 57 times 24 over 25. 25, negative 57 times 24 over 25. That's negative 54.72. Then for the 84 newton force, the x component is 84 cosine of 300 or 84 sine of 30. That's 42. Then the y component is negative 84 cosine of 30. That's negative 72.75. So adding the second column values. Rx is 52.00 newtons. Adding these values, Ry is negative 40.9 newtons. So therefore, the answer is the same as that.